My name is Josephine Kulea and I grew up in a typical Samburu village and uh, growing up as a Samburu girl there are a lot of challenges throughout my schooling my classmates would be brought out of class for early marriage maybe bidding I really felt for my classmates and uh, I got to go all the way up to college because my parents were supportive the idea of having support to go to school made me realize there's something wrong in my community so I decided to come back and do something intervene on the issues going on so I started Risking girls from the harmful cultural practices. I also feel we've really marginalized ourselves because holding on to some harmful cultural practices has really made us not progress. Bidding has been underground for so long because, um, well, people have not been talking about it. So it was time bidding was to be known to the world. As much as people are denying, especially some Samburus are denying bidding, but bidding is real. Ladies feel that it's a big issue, but majority of the men do not see it as an issue because it's the women who go through these challenges. Hi. We don't have much support from the men. We have a few who feel, but they, they really can't do much, nothing much about it because it seems culture here is stronger than the law. So it's proving difficult for most people to, to approach it head on, but I decided let me do it because at some point somebody has to do it. And it is a full-time job that takes her to some of the remotest villages in Samburu and Isiolo counties. Today, Josephine is visiting Mugurunanyori village in Isiolo county. She is here to check the progress of seven girls she rescued last year. Beiti, not her real name, is only 14 years old and has a one-year-old daughter. She went from a child who loved going to school and excelled in math to suffering rape and beatings at the hands of Omoran even before she had achieved puberty. She was beaded at a tender age of 12. She dropped from class 6 and she got beaded and one year later she got a baby. So she, last I came to rescue her um, with the rest and they went to a temporarily home. After they delivered, they had to come back with their babies. She plays with her daughter, giving her the love that was robbed from her. She's an orphan. She doesn't have a mom, so she has no, nobody to stay with her baby. But the baby is big now, and yeah, we, we are trying to get her somewhere to stay so that January she joins school. Her story is similar to that of 16-year-old Jane, again not her real name. Her innocence was shattered when she was pushed into the bidding practice at a tender age of 11. Although still young, her nine-month son is a result of bidding. She was also in school up to class 7 and then she, she left school. <coughs> she was bidding and then she got pregnant and we, we rescued her. Her mother saw no wrong in her underage daughter being beaded. She says Jane was just following tradition. When we took her away, it was of course unexpected. And then she was really bitter about the whole thing. But later, after she saw the girl is back with her baby and she's fine, she, she calmed down. For Dina, not her real name, life has been so cruel. She had to grow up way before her time, exposed to the horrors of beading that have snatched her childhood. For three years, she was turned into a sex slave by a Moran. But the moment she got pregnant, the Moran disappeared and the family wanted to get rid of the baby. Dina is only 13 years old. Luckily, she was rescued by Josephine. Once we took her away, the, ma the parents were so bitter, especially the mother. I was actually threatening and saying, whatever she gives birth to, she should not suckle my daughter. Like, she really, they really didn't want the baby. She was actually in school, in class four, then they got her out of school to look after goods. They bidded her, then that was two years ago, then last year she was among the group of the girls that I rescued. But unfortunately the day we arrived, she had already given birth that night, so when we came she would not even seen her baby. She only heard the sound of a baby cry, and they, they didn't let her even see. They lied to us that they, they don't know where the baby is, like they killed or something. They did away with the baby. Six months later, we got wind of where the baby is. They had sold the baby to some village in Chukana, 
and we went to pick the baby and brought back. But even after rescuing the girls and keeping them in a safe place until they delivered, Kulea had another headache. Reconciling the girls with their families, the parents did not want to see the babies, whom they considered as outcasts. They usually kill the babies because of two reasons. One, because maybe the girl has not undergone FGM. And two, because the, the union was from a relative, a clanmate. But after several meetings, they softened their stance. So if you are ready to accept both the babies and the girls, then we, we're going to bring them. So once they said they'll accept them, we really didn't want to believe their word because we always know what they do. Every three months, they have to go back to, to, to court to show their court that these are the babies, you've not killed them. So it's, it's a task for the parents, but I think it's also, it's also been an eye-opener for the rest. Jane's mother has since embraced her grandson, whom she once considered as evil. In our culture, there is no way an uncircumcised girl can give birth. But now, I have nothing against my grandson. He is just an innocent baby that needs love and care. Betty and Dina have also reconciled with their families. These children have no choice now but to think about the future of their children. For them to leave their babies behind, it's something that is giving them a headache. Like, now if my mother has a small baby, I'll give her another baby. So should I go to school this soon? Some are actually bargaining about you be staying one more year home just to get time to, for the baby to grow so that they leave them. But they are willing. They are willing to go to school and that's the good part of everything. 29-year-old Josephine believes that attitude change is what will help these young mothers have long-term success. For her, each girl she helps is cause for celebration. When you remember all the children you've helped and, and um, the happiness and, you know, when you visit them, the excitement they have and the, the dreams they have, you really feel like, yeah, that I should go and I should not give up. But these are the lucky few. Kulea says hundreds of girls are still trapped. And once a girl is pregnant, in most cases, the Moran abandons her immediately. Morans are not eligible to marry for a period of 12 to 15 years, during which they are solely dedicated to protecting the community. <laughs> According to Josephine, Morans, who have caused suffering to many girls, are proving to be a barrier in the fight against the culture of bidding. <laughs> Yeah, Morans are really difficult people to, to, to like, um, approach. That's what we really want to concentrate on, like spread out to the whole community and inform them that the, there's, the, there's this issue and it's really affecting us, all of us, and we should do something about it. As custodians of culture, they hold the final say and without their word, all efforts might just be in vain. Campaigns against the practice are starting to have an impact, but the change is coming too slowly and too late for many. <laughs> Since 2008, she has rescued 63 girls from bidding, early marriage and FGM. The goal is to help them come to terms with their past so they can focus on the future. They are, they are the ones to come back and tell their community, look here, we are really behind time, we should be moving ahead, we should leave out some of these things, keep the good culture and do away with the bad culture. Despite the challenges to keep her program going, Josephine is not lacking in motivation. When you report something urgent like this one and you can't get support from the government offices, then you feel that I, am I doing this for myself? Sometimes you get discouraged, but just knowing you are rescuing a child, I mean somebody's life and you're making a difference just makes you go. And she hopes that by providing them with support, she's also bringing hope to a community in crisis. She's quick to note that without support to break old habits, what has been achieved so far could be reversed.
I think it's time bidding should be addressed because it's been a silent killer, especially for the girls and the babies. It will really take time, but we also, if we get the support that we really need from all over, maybe I would call it from the government, from the well wishes. Girls in this region still face a lot of challenges from bidding, forced marriage, FGM and discrimination in education. These are the things that Kulea wants to see buried and forgotten forever. She knows that she still has tough times ahead, but she puts trust in God, rejoice in the results and persevere. Rosuangoi, NTV, Loruko Location, Isiolo County.